the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I'm bringing you another installment of In the Know, a series of videos for players who are just beginning to investigate what this great game has to offer. This is part three of my tutorial for playing the Arkham Horror LCG on my virtual tabletop of choice, Octagon. In part one of the series, we learned how to download and install Octagon as well as the Arkham Horror LCG mod and the image packs. In part two, we discussed building an investigator deck using Arkham DB or the Octagon deck builder. In this episode, we will learn how to create solo, two-handed, and multiplayer games in Octagon. Remember that if you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these in the know videos. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's learn how to play the Arkham Horror LCG on Octagon. Once you've built an investigator deck, it's time to start playing. Fire up Octagon and you will see this screen. If you'd like to play the Arkham Horror LCG solo or two-handed on Octagon, you do not need to sign in to the program. The ability to play the Arkham Horror LCG offline is one of the big reasons why Octagon remains my virtual tabletop of choice. To launch a solo game of Arkham Horror LCG, Click the Play or Spectate tab on the second row of the menu. Make sure that you have Arkham Horror the card game selected in the Game field, then click Start again. If you've done everything correctly, you will see this screen. Click Start again and you will launch the virtual tabletop. Under the Game menu in the top left corner, select Load Deck to load the deck file that you downloaded from ArkhamDB or created using Octagon's Deck Builder. This will load the Investigator deck into the Virtual Tabletop. For example, I've loaded the Roland Banks deck that I constructed in the Octagon deck builder. Roland Banks' Investigator card and Mini card have loaded onto the Virtual Tabletop. The Draw deck has loaded into the Draw deck window. And finally, the Virtual Tabletop drew a hand of five cards, which are displayed in the Hand window. If you attach the Chaos Bag to your Investigator deck, the tokens will appear in the Chaos Bag deck which is under the Global tab above your window that serves as your hand. As you can see here, there are 16 tokens in the Chaos Bag. A small symbol of a bag will also appear on the Virtual Tabletop next to the area that holds the Encounter cards. If you're playing two-handed, make sure that you attach a Chaos Bag to only one of the decks if both decks have Chaos Bags attached to them, you'll end up with double the Chaos Tokens, and you will need to reset the table under the Game menu. Remove the Chaos Tokens from one of the decks in the Octagon Deck Builder, and reload the decks. If you prefer to play with one of the pre-built Investigator decks, select Load Pre-built Deck under the Game menu instead. For example, here I have loaded the Harvey Walters Starter Deck. It's important to note the pre-built decks do not have a Chaos Bag attached to them, so you will need to load that separately. After you load the Investigator deck, click Load Pre-built Deck under the Game menu to load the Encounter deck or decks for the scenario of your choice. The Encounter decks will appear in the various deck windows which are under the Global tab. For example, I have loaded the pre-built deck for the Gathering scenario from the Night of the Zealot campaign from the Core set. As you can see, the starting location the study has loaded onto the Virtual Tabletop, Agenda 1A, Act 1A, and the Scenario Reference card have also loaded into the slots held for them. In the windows under the Global tab, you can see the cards remaining in the Agenda deck, the Act deck, as well as the Encounter deck. Cards that have been set aside for this scenario are contained in the second special Encounter deck. Finally, if you did not attach the Chaos Bag to your Investigator deck using the Octagon deck builder, click Load Pre-built Deck under the Game menu, then select the folder containing the scenario, and then select a Chaos Bag. There are usually four Chaos Bags available, one for each level of difficulty, Easy, Standard, Hard, and Expert. As you can see, I have loaded the Standard Chaos Bag for the Night of the Zealot campaign into the Virtual Tabletop. The tokens are contained in the Chaos Bag window. It's important to note that these Chaos Bag tokens are the defaults listed at the front of the Scenario Reference Sheet that comes with the Deluxe Expansion. If you're playing a campaign and one of the scenarios modified the contents of the Chaos Bag, you will need to modify the Chaos Bag each time you load it since none of the changes you make to the Chaos Bag will persist. 
You will also need to modify the Chaos Bag if you are playing a scenario in standalone mode, which is somewhat time consuming. If you modify the Chaos Bag, it's important to note that dragging the unwanted tokens onto the virtual tabletop or attempting to delete them won't work because they will immediately return to the Chaos Bag the moment you delete them or use the Control S shortcut to draw a token from the Chaos Bag. There are a couple of ways to work around this problem, but neither of them are particularly elegant. The first solution is to store the extra tokens in one of the other decks under the Global tab. For example, if the scenario isn't using the Special or Second Special decks, you can safely dump the tokens in there and forget about them. The second solution is to drag the unwanted tokens onto the virtual tabletop, right-click on the token, and select Seal Token. That will prevent the token from returning to the Chaos Bag. Let me give you an example. I have drawn the plus one Chaos Token. If I attempt to delete it, the token simply returns to the Chaos Bag. However, if I place the token on the virtual tabletop and then right-click on the token and click Seal Token, the token will be uh, grayed out, which means the token is sealed on the table and it will no longer be drawn from the Chaos Bag. And then I can safely pull the token to some out-of-the-way place so it will not uh, get in my way. If I don't want to worry about sealing the token, I can also drag it and drop it into the second special deck where it will stay for the rest of the game. If I need the token back, I can simply drag it back to the virtual tabletop and then drag and drop it back into the Chaos Bag window. If you forgot to attach the Chaos Bag to your Investigator deck before you loaded it into Octagon, or you need to make changes to the Chaos Bag, there's a very simple way to do that. Simply right-click on the Virtual Tabletop, click Add Card. In the filter, type the name of the token you want. Remember that Elder Things are called Elder Ones in Octagon. Type that in. That will uh, give you a token to select, and then you click Create, and the token will be created, and then you can drag that token into the Chaos Bag. Take my advice, attach the Chaos Bag tokens to your Investigator deck using the Octagon Deck Builder, and you will save yourself a lot of time in the long run. Once you've loaded an Investigator deck, an Encounter deck, and a Chaos Bag if necessary, you are ready to begin playing. If you make a mistake and load the wrong Investigator deck, Encounter deck, or Chaos Bag, you can reset the Virtual Tabletop under the Game menu and reload. If you'd like to play the Arkham Horror LCG on Octagon with a friend, you'll need to sign in to Octagon after you fire up the program. After you sign in, select the Play or Spectate tab on the second row menu to see the list of games currently available on the server. To create a new game, click the Start button, make sure Arkham Horror the card game is selected in the Game field in the Start a Game window, and give the game an appropriate name. If you want to prevent a stranger from unintentionally joining your game, you can add a password in the appropriate field. Once you've filled out all the fields, click the Start button. If you've done everything properly, you'll see this screen. Octagon will notify you when a player joins the game. There is a chat window available on this screen if you need to communicate prior to launching the game. When you're ready to launch the virtual tabletop, both players need to hit the Start button. As with the solo game, each player needs to select Load Deck under the Game menu in the top left corner. One player, typically the player who started the game, must load the Encounter Deck or Decks and or the Chaos Bag by selecting Load Pre-Built Deck under the Game menu. If one of the players attached the Chaos Bag tokens for the campaign or standalone scenario to their Investigator Deck, you do not need to load a Chaos Bag. If you make a mistake while loading decks, click Reset under the Game menu this will clear the virtual tabletop and both players will need to reload their decks. You may also use Octagon to play the Arkham Horror LCG two-handed solo. If you've got the computing power, you can play three or even four-handed solo if you wish. One of the great things about playing two-handed solo on Octagon is that you can do it offline. Setting up a two-handed solo game on Octagon is like setting up a multiplayer game with a few twists. First, launch Octagon. Once you reach the login screen, launch a second instance of the program. When you launch the second instance of Octagon, the program will ask you whether you would like to close the first instance of the program. Click the No button, at which point the program will launch the second instance. If you've done everything correctly, your screen should look something like this. Once both instances of Octagon are running, you don't need to sign in to either instance. 
In the first instance of the program, click the Play Spectate tab on the second row of the menu. Then click Start. As you can see, we have a Start Game menu. We click Start again. If you've done everything correctly, you should see a screen like this. Once you've started a game in the first instance, swap to the second instance of the program. Click the Play Spectate tab on the second row of the menu. You should see the game that you just launched in the first instance under the list of available games. Select the game and click Join. If you don't see the game you launched in the first instance listed in the game window, click the Join Unlisted button instead, and you will join the game. If you've done everything correctly, you should see a screen like this. Swap back to the first instance and click Start, and both instances will launch the virtual tabletop. As with the solo game, you must load a deck in each instance by selecting Load Deck under the game menu in the top left corner of the respective tabletops. For example, I have loaded the Harvey Walters starter deck in the first instance and the Jacqueline Fine starter deck in the second instance. In the first instance, you can see the Harvey Walters investigator card and his mini card, as well as the Jacqueline Fine investigator card and her mini card, and you can also see the Harvey Walters investigator card and mini card and the Jacqueline Fine investigator card and mini card in the second instance. You must also load the encounter decks or decks and or the Chaos Bag in one and only one instance by selecting Load Pre-Built Deck under the Game menu. Typically, I load the Encounter Deck and Chaos Bag in the first instance. If you've attached the Chaos Tokens for the campaign or standalone scenario to the Investigator Deck that you loaded in the first instance, you do not need to load a Chaos Bag. For example, I have loaded the Gathering scenario into the first instance, you can see the starting location, the study, is on the virtual tabletop, and Agenda 1A, Act 1A, and the Scenario Reference card are in the holder for the Encounter cards. I have also loaded the standard Chaos Bag for the Night of the Zealot campaign, which you can find in the Chaos Bag deck under the Global tab. Once you've loaded a deck onto each virtual tabletop, there are a couple of steps that you can take to improve the two-handed experience. While you can play the game by swapping between the two virtual tabletops, there is a much easier solution. First, select the second virtual tabletop that you created, then double tap the mouse pad and highlight the cards from the deck that you loaded in that instance. Usually this includes the Investigator and Investigator mini cards. Right click on the cards that you selected to bring up the menu, then select Pass Control To, which is the fifth option from the bottom. Select the other player listed in the menu, this will pass control of the cards to the first instance, enabling you to play without swapping back and forth between windows. For example, I select the Jacqueline Fine Investigator card and Mini card in the second instance. I right-click on those cards, select Pass Control, and pass control of those cards to the first instance. As you can see, I can no longer select Jacqueline Fine Investigator card or the mini card in the second instance, but if I swap to the first instance, I can now highlight the cards and move them around the tabletop. Once you've passed control of the player cards on the virtual tabletop in the second instance, right-click on the hand window, select pass control, and pass control of the hand to the first instance as well. Do the same for the draw deck, as well as the discard pile. At this point, you can minimize the second virtual tabletop and play the game using the first. You will find the hand, draw deck, and discard pile for the second instance under the third tab just above the hand window. If you right-click the hand window, you can set the visibility of the cards to everybody. As you can see, I have set Jacqueline Fine's hand visibility to everybody, and now I can see all of the cards in her hand. If you're playing three or four-handed, simply follow the steps I have listed above for the third or fourth instances too. If you've passed control of the decks and cards properly, then you'll be able to control all the investigators and their respective decks from the first instance of Octagon, which will make your life a lot simpler. As you can see, I can drag cards from Jacqueline Fine's hand to the table, and I can drag cards from Jacqueline Fine's deck to her hand, and I can drag cards from her hand to the discard pile. I can also reorganize the virtual tabletop as I see fit. As far as I can tell, there is only one bug with this approach to playing two-handed. If you click Delete to discard a card from the second instance that is controlled by the first, the card ends up in the proper discard pile. 
However, if you randomly discard a card from the hand of the second instance that is controlled by the first, or you right-click on a card from the second instance that is controlled by the first and attempt to move it, say, to the bottom of the deck, the card will end up in the wrong pile or at the bottom of the wrong deck. Fortunately, this problem doesn't crop up too often and it's relatively easy to work around. Simply drag and drop the cards in the correct piles as necessary. That said, if a card that technically belongs to the second instance goes missing, check the deck and discard pile of the first instance. It's probably hiding somewhere in there. For example, I have dragged the clairvoyance asset to the virtual tabletop. If I click delete, clairvoyance ends up in Jacqueline Fine's discard pile. However, if I right click on the card and select move to bottom of hand, the card does not return to my hand. However, if I check the Harvey Walters hand, there is the clairvoyance. This bug will also crop up if you attempt to randomly discard a card from the second player's hand. Currently, Jacqueline Fine's hand includes Robes of Endless Night, Arbiter of Fates, Prescient, and Ritual Candles. If I attempt to randomly discard one of those cards, it does not end up in Jacqueline Fine's discard pile. In this case, I discarded Prescient randomly. If I check Harvey Walter's discard pile, there is the Prescient. That's going to do it for part 3 of my tutorial about playing the Arkham Horror LCG on Octagon. Join me in part 4 where I'll discuss the controls that I commonly use once I've launched Octagon's virtual tabletop and loaded the decks. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.